My name is Candace Gollum. I'm a hematologist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I have an interest in neutrophils and neutrophil extracellular traps. Um, and in this project, I focused on their role in the development of thrombosis and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which also is called HIT. So objectives of this talk are to review how platelet factor four influences neutrophil behavior, to discuss how platelet factor four and HIT antibody bindings alters neutrophil extracellular traps or NETs, and to understand how these interactions contribute to venous thrombosis and HIT. So platelet factor four is a platelet specific chemokine released in high concentrations in the setting of platelet activation. And you'll see here it has a ring of strong positive charge overlying the center of the tetramark. Now, because of its positive charge, platelet factor four can bind to polyanions like heparin and form immunogenic complexes. And when antibodies develop against these complexes, they can trigger the development of both venous thrombosis as well as arterioclots, depicted here at the DVT and a pulmonary embolus. Now, KKO is a murine monoclonal antibody that mimics HIT-like antibodies in its ability to bind to platelet factor four heparin complexes, as indicated over here. It has less ability to bind to PF4 on its own. Now, KIT, uh, KKO induces thrombocytopenia and thrombosis when it's injected into HIT mice. And these, and these mice transgenically express both human platelet factor 4 and FC gamma R2. And they become thrombocytopenic and they develop microvascular thrombosis spontaneously after exposure to HIT antibodies. So, why neutrophils and HIT? Neutrophils bind PF4 with high affinity. Neutrophils also bear the FC gamma R2A receptor. And HIT like antibodies have been known to stimulate neutrophil activation and adhesion. So I started my studies by looking at neutrophil adhesion in venules and hit mice. So here you see the neutrophils at baseline running along the venule, but 15 minutes following KKO injection, there's much more avid adhesion of neutrophils to the endothelium, and that's depicted over here on the chart to the right. Now when we injure those endothelium with a laser, you have platelet accumulation over the site of injury, and then when the mice are exposed to hit antibodies, the neutrophils adhere downstream of the clot, and then they begin to phagocytose backwards into the thrombus. Over time, they begin to accumulate, as demonstrated over here in a mouse injected with KKO with robust neutrophil accumulation in the venous clot. We don't see the same effect when we use the isotype control antibody, TRA. Now we're going to switch a little bit to talk about neutrophil extracellular traps, which are expelled by neutrophils in the setting of inflammation or infection. They're composed of decondensed chromatin and antimicrobial proteins, and they entrap bacteria, but they also can damage host tissue and cause thrombosis. So here is the same laser injury in a venule of a mouse that's deficient in an enzyme called PAD4 that cannot release nets. And you'll see that they have decreased platelet accumulation and maybe some decrease in neutrophil adhesion in these clots. And when we went ahead and quantified it, we found that although there's robust neutrophil accumulation in our PAD4 expressing mice, we see decreased platelet and neutrophil accumulation in animals that don't express PAD4 and can't release nets. And this effect, to a certain extent, can be recapitulated by treatment with DNAs. Now, PF4 also has an interesting effect on nets. Here in this net line channel, when we infuse them with PF4 in the bottom, they become compact. And this uh, graph over here, the right, just shows that nets infused with PF4 become smaller. They also become resistant to nuclease. So here we again have our nets lining the channel. On the top channel, those are naked nets rapidly digested, but in the bottom channel, we have PF4 compacted nets that are resistant to nuclease digestion. Now, this effect um, we know is due to binding of PF4 to the net structures themselves. There's minimal KKO binding to naked nets that don't have PF4 on their surface. However, after they're compacted, KKO adheres beautifully to these PF4 DNA complexes. And this also has an effect. So here we show an intermediate concentration of PF4, which the nets are typically still susceptible to digestion. But when we infuse them with DNAs in the channels that were incubated with KKO, there's additional protection from nucleases. So our model of how PF4 influences netosis in the context of HIT um, are below. So here we have HIT antibodies binding to PF4 complexes on the surface of neutrophils where they lead to enhanced adhesion and then enhanced neutrophil infiltration into venous thrombi. And then after the neutrophils accumulate in these clots, they're stimulated to release nets by activated platelets. And these nets are in turn bound by platelet factor four and hit antibodies that lead to net compaction as well as to thrombus stabilization. 